general public wouldn't uh, probably doesn't have a clue who he is, uh, and that's sad. But um, but uh, anybody who has a who's steeped in the history of film knows that he's like one of the giants. George Méliès was a French filmmaker in the early 1900s, and he is considered the father of special effects. He explored the way that films can communicate a story. He exchanged his ideas with filmmakers that came after him, and whether it is through filmmakers' acknowledgments or his own inventions in film today, his influence is undeniable. Movies. We see them today as exciting epics, capturing dramas, or tear-jerking tragedies. But it wasn't always that way. When the Lumiere brothers invented the motion picture cinemagraph in 1985, most films had no story. In fact, the first motion picture, the exit from the Lumiere factory in Lyon, was just that, a group of people exiting a factory without explanation. It remained like this for a while, very simplistic, documentary films. But then, there was a break in the formula, and that break was cinematic magician George Méliès. But wait, how did we get here? For that, we need to go back to an afternoon in 1895. Both of Méliès' parents have been shoemakers, and Méliès wanted something different. He wanted to dazzle audiences, so he became a magician. He performed at local French fairs and was pretty successful. But then, he decided to check out what everyone at the fair was talking about. The Lumiere brothers were showing off their cinemagraph. Méliès went into the theater and, in his words, saw the future. He had never seen audiences dazzled like this before. He knew what the new way to impress audiences was. Immediately after the show, Méliès went up to Antoine Lumiere and offered to buy the cinemagraph from him. The offer went up to 10,000 francs. Still, Antoine declined and Méliès had to find some other way to get the cinemagraph. Eventually, he bought one from a British inventor for 1,000 francs and begun work. He sold all of his magician equipment and used his savings to build a production studio. His early films were nothing but remakes and copies of old Lumiere films. He would show them at theaters to gain a little experience and respect, but then he decided to make films of his own. It was the exchange of his ideas and those that came before him that led to Méliès' unique. Uh, Trip to the Moon is one, obviously, you know, that's sort of his masterpiece and one that everybody talks about. But lots of fun stuff. I mean, beautiful effects that he does, and um, he doesn't do all of them in that film, but, you know. When you watch, the more you watch, you see, you see these more, the, all this other fun stuff that he played around with. Melier is known as the father of special effects. He brought about the use of the stop trick, where you start the camera, stop rolling, change something in the scene, and then start again. Today, filmmakers use this with editing software, but Melier didn't have that. He just spliced the film together and taped it. His films had wild stories, filled with pure imagination. His characters were not people exiting from their workplace or catching a train. They were aliens, ghouls, skeletons, astronauts and the like. Méliès became wildly successful. Because film was such a new medium, there was demand for such a filmmaker. One that could produce fantastical stories. He became one of the biggest names in France at the time. His company, Star Film, was expanding rapidly. Actors were hired, set construction doubled. George even had his brother, Gaston Méliès, open an entirely new branch of star film in America. Here, in the newfound Hollywood marketplace, Méliès films could really profit. The, you know, he opened my eyes to this idea of, um, of uh, what could be possible in, in, in filmmaking to not think so literally, you know, pe people having a conversation in a cafe or something like that, you know, the standard scenes we see a lot in a romantic comedy or something like that, or even in an action film you see a car chase or whatever, those, those feel like they could be happening in reality. He sort of encouraged to sort of embrace the fantastic. Melier made over 500 films. He wrote and directed them all and starred in many. He covered every genre, from action, sci-fi, fantasy, romance, and comedy. It seemed like he could take any cinematic challenge that was thrown at him, except for maybe one. On June 28, 1914, Gavilo Princip assassinated Archduke Franz Ferdinand and the world went to war. Now, because of Melies' age, he did not serve, but that is not to say the war did not affect him. The only audience for his stories were women and children who were preoccupied with taking care of themselves. 
After the war, the tired and traumatized soldiers treaded home, but not into a movie theater. Suddenly, no one wanted to watch a movie. People had seen war and the horrors of it. Nobody had time for a silly story anymore. Cinema attendance plummeted, especially in France. Many filmmakers suffered and went out of business. Star Film went out of business within a year. The American branch continued but was eventually bought out by the Edison Company. Melier was spun into depression. He sold his negatives to a company that melted them down into shoe heels. The shoemaker's son had become the shoemaker himself. He bought a small toy stand with the money he had and spent the rest of his days inventing and selling small toys. The impact of Georges Méliès is undeniable. Filmmakers today use his techniques all the time. Processes such as dissolve, the stop trick, and focus pulling are normal tools in the filmmaker arsenal now. Méliès was the first to popularize these and many other techniques. For example, take dissolve. Dissolve is taking one shot of a film and blending it into another, whether it be to black, to white, or to another scene. Méliès was the first to do this. In this scene, in Orson Welles' Citizen Kane, he uses Dissolve. You know, a, a, a George Millier is definitely uh, forgotten by many, but there are a lot of people that, that, that remember him, uh, like Martin Scorsese, and, and, and people who, uh, who are leaders in the industry who uh, revere him and, 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 and don't forget him at all. Millier has not been forgotten by other filmmakers. Martin Scorsese made an entire film about Millier, the 2011 release Hugo. Scorsese is also called Millier a genius and one of the greatest filmmakers of all time. When he received the Legion of Honor, Walt Disney gave a speech thanking Millier. Disney said that Millier discovered the means of placing poetry within the reach of the man in the street. And in 2015, Millier was inducted into the Science Fiction and Fantasy Hall of Fame. But most importantly, Millier's stories inspired filmmakers for the rest of time. When we go into the movies today, we don't see what the Lumiere brothers or Thomas Edison created, lifeless pictures of daily life. We see the fantastic. Fantastic stories and fantastic characters. And the fantastic state of the film started with Melier. And the shame is, not many filmmakers today even know his name. Movies are important, even if you don't know it. If they haven't inspired you, they've inspired someone around you. George Méliès contributed to this inspiration perhaps more than any other filmmaker. His inventions are still seen in film today. His exploration of how films could tell a story transformed what movies can be.